Have you been making music, but you're not seeing the climb that you want? What if I told you that one of the main reasons for this could be how long your track length is and that you need to start making radio edits? By cutting your track time in half, you don't bore your audience, you pretty much guarantee a replay and you up those numbers. Here is how you do it. So when jumping into your radio edit, the first thing you need to make sure of is that you have a track that's finished. Don't have a track that's completely unfinished. Make sure you've got the full extended mix already done so we can go on to the radio edit. Now the parts that you're definitely gonna want for the radio edit are gonna be the middle part of the track. That's where all the hype and the breakdown is, right? So we're gonna take from the first build up to the end of the B section, something like that, okay? We're looking for the main hyper energy part of the track. Now I'd recommend doing it in the same project just so you can copy and paste stuff across. Once you have your new project, the first thing you're gonna do is take those B sections and you're gonna cut them in half. So right here, you can see my B is this long. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the middle eight and leave just the two out fours and crunch them together. By taking out the middle eight, you get the start and the exit of that section. If you take out the start or the end, you might come in a bit unexpectedly because your transitions might be over the place. So when cutting sections in half, make sure you're taking from the middle because that's where there's gonna be the least amount of change. In some breakdowns as well, I also will cut them in half if I've got a really long breakdown. So like for this track, I had a 16 beat breakdown, so I cut it in half to eight. But if you have eight, you don't necessarily need to cut it, but it's your personal preference. So the first thing to look out for after you've cut is you need to check where your cuts are and you definitely need to worry about the low end because the low end can cause clicks if the cuts are on the beat. Straight away here, I'm going into my bass line, for example, and I'm checking what it looks like. And it actually, it looks okay on the bass. Drums is not as important because drums, they flow quite easily. You just want to check that they're all okay. The next thing that we really care about though is the kick. So we come down to the kick here, right? And as you can see, I bring the bar back just a little bit enough so that the kick isn't starting on the beat. If we have it like that, we might get a click in the low end, which is gonna be really annoying. And here as well, I tail off the double kick a little bit more so that there's a bit of a seamless transition. They're not potentially gonna click across. Then have a quick look at your FX. And if there are any FX you're cutting off halfway through, make sure you extend them so you get the full drag out of the crash, for example, or the sweep across. Once you've checked all your cuts and you're happy with your low end and there are no clicks, that's when you wanna start building the radio edit. So what you need for a radio edit, I think, is you need a quick start and you need a quick hit finish. By having those two things, it gives people the song straight away and they don't have to wait around for it. We don't need 24 bars of intro drums because we're not mixing. This is for Spotify, Apple Music, you know, SoundCloud. This is for people to stream. So you want them to be hearing the music and the best part of the track straight away. Starting with the end, the best way I find to come out of a track is after that B section, just go right to the end of the track and the last sort of four or eight beats just change them with high pass kicks. Even if the original track doesn't have that, throw some high pass kicks in because it signalizes the end of the track. And then maybe bring an effect in, crash it out, tail off some of the drums and make sure it all fades out pretty quickly, like this. The start's a bit harder because you want to bring energy, but you don't want to give away the track too early. Things to look for in the start is you want high energetic drums to come in, but you want to lead them into the break. If you have a particular hook, like a vocal or an iconic melody, you want to make sure you get a little bit of that in at the start because then it's going to let people know what the track is straight away. So I started with about eight to 16 bars of drums in front of the radio edit. As you can see here, I've cut it down to literally four bars. We have a few drums, drums build up and we crash straight in and we're coming in with the bass straight away. So straight away we're bringing the energy but we're not giving away the track and we still managed to bring that sweep in which is really important for this track and the other thing like i mentioned i brought in that vocal hook so just before the drums start we have that little cheeky vocal hook that's gonna let people know what the tune is we use a little reverse on the vocal that we have later in the track we bring it forward just throw in the main thing find the beat we don't need too much and we come straight in with the drums don't be afraid to experiment with effects because what you can do is grab some from later in the track and use them as a little crash intro because you don't want the beginning to be so dry that there's nothing there, you need that effect. So just that little sweep over there gives it a little bit more zazz so it's not too dry and it gets people engaged. Also, you need to make sure you have a thumping kick straight away because the kick signalizes what the track is about. I find with my radio edits, because I'm bringing effects into the style and I'm adding a few things, I might need to automate or add a few plugins just to get stuff correct. For example, with this effect, at the start, I needed it to be quieter, a bit more EQ'd and compressed. So I have those three things on the track. What I need to make sure is I automate them to only be on for that part of the track. Just go and check the rest of your track, make sure they're not still on, and make sure you haven't changed the original track if you're working in the same project. Don't be afraid to add automation and extra plugins just to make the start sound really good. Just make sure they don't affect the actual track 
because if you accidentally add plugins that change the radio edit from the extended, it might start sounding like a bit of a different track and you don't want that. We want the same mix, but we don't want to be changing the track because that's going to a different ballpark of remixing it. So try not to change the track, just if you're going to add plugins, automate them for only that little bit of time that you need them. With that, you have a streaming editor that you can push to your Spotify, your Apple Music and to labels and it's a lot easier to promote. No one wants to sit there and listen to so much drum intro and breakdown and slow builds and stuff. As you can see here, I've cut the track to just under three minutes when originally I think it was just over a five minute track. What this is more likely to do is people get to the end and they want to play it again because they need to hear it again because it was a really good vibe. People want to hear it again and by people replaying it, that betters your numbers and helps the algorithm see that the song is really good, so on and so forth. I'm not saying this is definitely going to help your tracks become superstar tracks, but what it will do gives you more practice in editing music and also it does make it more likely for people to listen to it over and over. I've listened to my own track more with it being a radio edit because I can hear it quicker and hear what it sounds like. For a recap, make sure you're cutting out your B section to being smaller. Look for any clicks in the low end. Low end is the most important part with clicking. Check your bass, check your kick drums and check your effects. Make sure they're starting not on the beat so you don't get any clicks. Do a quick intro with a vocal hook or a melodic hook if you have one, some drums in high energy into the breakdown and on the other end when you're coming out, use high pass kicks to signify the end of the track fade the drums out quickly, throw an effect on the end maybe to sweep it out and you're done. That's all you want. We're looking for quick tracks, something they would actually play on the radio. That's why it's called a radio edit. Obviously nowadays it's more streaming based. Look to make something short. Remember though, do not change the track with your master and your mix. Don't add stuff or change the track. Then you're going down the remix path, which is different to radio editing. Any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. If you like the video, please subscribe. Follow for more content. We're going to be bringing more technical breakdowns like this. Stream my songs on Spotify right now. That one doesn't have a radio edit, ironically. That's why I started doing them, because I felt that that song was too much to push to everybody. It was too long. Next tune coming out is going to have a radio edit, which is important. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Miles away.